There's a difference in believing about Him and believing in Him. I can believe about Jesus. I can believe everything the Bible says about Jesus and say, yeah, well, that's, uh, that's probably true. But believing in Him means that I accept Him for who He is. And as a result of that, knowing Him as the Christ, the Messiah, the Savior, and the Lord, I yield my life to Him. Many people believe about Him. And they'll tell you, oh, yes, I, bl I believe in Jesus. What they're saying is, I believe about Him. They don't question that the Bible is true, or they don't question the fact that uh, uh, God loves us, and they can have all kind of general ideas. But to believe in Jesus involves repentance. It's not enough that you just regret what you've done. He says, but that sorrow, that regret should bring you to the point of repentance. For you were made sorrowful according to the will of God, so that you might not suffer loss in anything through us. For the sorrow that is according to the will of God produces repentance. It's one thing to be sorry that you got caught, or be sorry that you said something and did something you knew was not right. But he says, it should be a sorrow, a regret that leads you to repentance. He says, and leads you to salvation. But the sorrow of the world produces death. That is, when we regret our sins before Almighty God, that should lead us to repentance, not just simply feeling sorry for. Repentance is all about a change of life. And so often we don't think about that. We think about, well, if I just, you know, confess my sins and tell God I'm sorry and so forth, and that'll be the end of it. You trust the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you're not going to, if you really mean that, you're not going to live like you used to live. I didn't say that you would never sin again. I'm saying that your life will not be the same. Why? Because the very Word itself speaks in terms of a change. There needs to be repentance in the life of a person who is living in willful, known sin against God. And think about this. This is the devil's lie. Satan will tell you, well, here's what you'll have if you'll do this, and here's what you'll have if you do this, and, and if you believe that. What he doesn't say to you is this. Here are the consequences of disobedience. Here is the consequence of this sin. And so you can ever win living in disobedience to God. If we live continually with sin in our life and never dealing with it, and just excusing it and saying, I'm sorry, God, then we are losers every day. Listen, you cannot improve on the will of God. He has, the, he has a will for each of us that's for our benefit. I didn't say that you'd never suffer or that you'd never sin, but it's for our benefit in every way. And so repentance is the word John the Baptist used, Jesus used, Paul used, Peter used, all the way through scriptures, the last book of the Revelation. Repentance is a change. It's a change that takes place in a person's life with, listen, on the basis of their willingness to repent, on the basis of their willingness to deal with anything in their life that looks like, feels like, smells like, anything that is an act of disobedience. When we live a godly life, we don't tolerate sin. I didn't say you'd never sin. I didn't say you'd be perfect. I said you wouldn't tolerate it. You wouldn't just ignore it and say, well, God, I'm sorry for it. You can join every church you want to join. You can be baptized, sprinkled, immersed, poured on, you name it. You can be a member of every kind of denomination possible. You can go to church. You can give your money. You can do a lot of good things. If you have never repented of your sins, if you've never trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior, if you have never believed in Him as Savior and Lord, surrendering your life to Him, none of that is going to do you any good. Because salvation is involves, listen, not only confession of my sinfulness, but repentance toward God and laying them aside. Repentance isn't just being sorry. Repentance means being sorrowful under the conviction of the Holy Spirit to the point that I make a change, I turn. To repent means that I turn. I've been walking this way all of my life, and when I repent of the way I've been walking, I'm going to turn and go in the opposite direction. Many people tell you that they're saved. They're not saved. They believed about Him, but they've not truly believed in Him, surrendering their life to Him. If somebody says, well, if you're saved, you won't sin. Not even the Apostle Paul said that. So the, the issue is this, and it's not a fine line. It is simply a matter of understanding. 
I place my trust in Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. I surrender my life to Him, and I repent of my sins. And as best I know my heart, I'm, I give myself to Him as best I understand at that particular point in life, and I start living a Christian life. Then what happens? If I'm genuinely, truly saved, and I sin against God, the Spirit of God's going to convict me. I'm going to ask Him to forgive me, and I'm going to repent of it. You say, well, how many times you have to do that? Well, I don't have any idea how many times I've had to say, God, forgive me for that. I truly repent of that sin. Because remember, when you and I save, we're like babes. And we grow in our Christian life. We don't tolerate it. We don't excuse it. We deal with sin when it becomes a part of our life. A sanctified life is a life that is set apart by God for God, for His purposes. When you get saved... When you trust Him as your Savior, he, listen, He not only redeems you, he, he pays the price, He justifies you, He declares you righteous, He reconciles you, bringing you back to Himself, He sanctifies you, which means He sets you apart for Himself, for His purposes. That's why living in sin, once you've been saved, does not fit who you are. Because the Holy Spirit came into our life to sanctify us, to set us apart as the children of God to do what? To live a godly life. If we say that we have no sin, we're deceiving ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess, agree with God about our sin. Now, let me ask you a question. What do you think God thinks about your sin? You know it's wrong. It doesn't belong in your life. It doesn't fit who you are. It doesn't fit your relationship to Him. It shouldn't be that at all. Therefore, we need to repent of it. Amen? Amen. Okay. Now, amen. Now, listen. If we confess our sins, what is confess? We agree with God that it's wrong. He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That is, He makes things different.